you have your Bible this morning, if you will turn and take it and turn to the book of Jeremiah. Now, you won't have to turn. You're, there's a lot of verses, and they're all in your bulletin. So all you have to do is just take the uh, back of your bulletin, the bulletin sermon notes back there, and they'll all be right there. But if you want to turn to the first one, the first one is found in Jeremiah chapter 20. Today, we're going to be looking at life's three greatest questions. You want to write these down? They're listed on the back of your bulletin again. Question number one. Number one, back of your bulletin, is the question of existence. The question of existence. In other words, the question is, is why am I here? Not exactly a new question. It was asked thousands of years ago. It was asked by Jeremiah. Here in this passage, Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 18, he says, why was I born? Was it only to have trouble and sorrow to send my life or to spend my uh, end my life in disgrace? So Jeremiah is even asking the question. You know that those are tragic statements because it is basically the idea of life without purpose. And a life without purpose is pointless. It isn't worth living. It's no coincidence that the suicide rate in our society has gone up. It is the number two killer of teenage students, even before COVID. And you see, if you take God out of the equation, you don't really have very many alternatives. You try the, you know, there's lots of approaches. You can try the mystical approach. The mystical approach basically says, look within. It's, it's inside you. Find your purpose within. And you know that if you really work all of this out, then you'll find your purpose. I'm sure that you've tried it. Everyone else has tried it. I didn't find it there. It takes more than just looking inside you to find purpose. Well, for Winfrey, on a program that she had a number of years ago, was talking about the aspect of discovering purpose for your life. At the end of the show, basically, she said, and remember, you've got to figure it out by yourself. In other words, look within. And, uh, by the way, looking within is not the answer. Then you can try the philosophical approach. The purpose of life is just to stay alive. In other words, the longer you live, that's your purpose. Or the naturalist would say that you basically are here to perpetuate yourself. You are basically here as a biological person to bring more biological persons around. Uh, doesn't that just motivate you to jump out of bed in the morning? The hedonist says the purpose of life is pleasure. Have fun. Party on, dude. <laughs> The materialist says life is all about the acquisition of stuff. How much stuff do you have? And your, and your life is measured by all of what you own. The problem with that is that, the, like the saying goes, the one who dies with the most toys is still dead. In other words, it really doesn't satisfy anybody's answer. There's the mystical approach, the philosophical approach, or you can try the self-help group approach. You can go to any bookstore. You can go to any bookstore, and there are self-help books that are available for you. And then you can probably find some wonderful talks and, and all of these things on the Internet that discovering your life purpose. And they're basically all the same. They say the same thing. You've got to invent your purpose. You've got to create your own purpose. And they give you all of these basically good slogans. You've all heard these slogans. Discover your dream. Go after your goals. Have some ambition. Dream big dreams. Aim high. Believe you can achieve. Have faith. Figure it out for whatever you have got, uh, good at. Never give up. Involve some other people. Now, by the way, none of this I could say would be bad advice. They're all good advice. And in some ways, if you do those things, you, may be, you probably could turn out successful. But is being a success and knowing your purpose in life, are they the same thing? I don't think so. You can be a raving success in life and still never know, what on earth am I here for? Why did God put me here? You see, the purpose of your life is far more greater than your own personal fulfillment. It's far greater than your own happiness. But it's even greater than your peace of mind. You were made by God, and you were made for God, and you were put here for a purpose. And until you understand that, 
it isn't going to make life make sense. Okay then, well why does God want us here? Why are we alive? Is there a reason? Well, look at your scriptures that are in front of you. Next verse is Proverbs chapter 16. Proverbs 16, there are, this is there on the back of your bulletin. The Lord has made everything for his own purpose. So you were made for his purpose. Now God has made everything, God hasn't made anything without a purpose. Every rock has a purpose, every plant has a purpose, every animal has a purpose. And if you're alive, you have a purpose. The truth is, God has purposes for your life. What is uh, God's motive? Well, look at the next verse, Ephesians chapter 1. Long before he laid down the earth's foundation, he had us in mind and he settled on us as the focus of his love to be made whole and holy by his love. I want you to understand, God says he made you. Why did he make you? He made you to love you. He didn't make you to love him per se, but he made you so that he could love you. That's your purpose for being. You were created to be loved by God. Write that down, it's there in your bulletin again. You were created to be loved by God. God is love and God wants to create something to love and so he created you. By the way, he didn't need you, he wasn't lonely. But he made you in order to love you. He didn't need you, but he wanted you. And before we can talk about anything else, you have to understand that this is what on earth you're here for. You are here to be loved by God. Number two, the second key question here is the question of significance. Significance. Does my life matter? Isaiah asked this question in Isaiah chapter 49. He said, my work all seems so useless, I'll spend my strength for nothing and for no purpose at all. All these are scriptures that are listed on the back of your bullet. You're made for meaning. You don't have a meaning and a purpose in your life and you don't know why God put you on this planet. And the feeling is this life doesn't make sense. It's interesting, during World War II, there were prisoners in a Nazi concentration camp in Hungary, and they were basically, their job was processing human sewage in this factory. The Allied bombers came along and basically they blew up the plant. And so the prisoners basically had nothing to do. And so the Nazi soldiers had the prisoners, what they did is they told them, go over to the plant and all the rubble over there and pick everything up and take it over here and put it in this field. So they had all the prisoners go over there and start picking up all the bricks that were in disarray and they began to stack them up over in this field. The next day, the Nazis said, now I want you to take all that stuff that's in that field and bring it back and put it over there where the bomb was. So that was the next day. So they took all that stuff and stacked it back over here. The next day, the Nazis came and said, we want you to take all that stuff that was over there by the bomb. We want you to pick all that up and put it back in the field over here. And then the next day, they said, take it out of the field and bring it. It was just work to do something. Over and over, no meaning, no purpose. Something strange began to happen. The prisoners began to go crazy. They began to lose their will to live because there was no meaning, no purpose in their work. Many of them would throw themselves in, the gar in front of the guards trying to get shot. In essence, they were trying to commit suicide because you and I were made for meaning in our lives. Now you're gonna go through life on one of three levels. Here's three levels, you can write these down. The first level is, is that of the survival level. The survival level is really where most people live today. They're just in survival mode. They're just barely getting by, they're just existing, they're not living, they're controlled by their circumstances that are around them. We, we see this a lot because of what COVID is doing to us. And they, they basically put in their time, they live for the weekend, you know, at least to get out, and it's basically survival mode. But a step up from that, a better way of life, is what we would call the success level. 
Above survival level is the success level, and honestly, that's where most of you are today. By the world standards, you've got it made. By the world standards, you've got a comfortable life, you're compared to the rest of the world, you are extremely wealthy compared to the rest of the world. And so you have, uh, even with COVID, you have possessions, you have freedom, you have, we could say, health, uh, you may have prestige, you may be successful, but today there are a lot of books that are coming out saying, you know, I'm so successful about how, how come I don't feel fulfilled? And the reason is that it takes more than success to make you feel good. You want more than that to feel satisfied. And so you need to go to the third level. The third level of living is significance. Not survival, not success, but significance. Step up to that level. Now, how do you live at the significant level? Well, you get there through three things. You know the meaning of life, that gives significance. You know how much you matter to God, that gives you significance. And you know God's purpose for your life, and you're living that out in front of the world. That's significant. If you want to know how much you matter to God, all you have to do is read the verses from the Creator. God says in Isaiah, I am your Creator. You were in my care even before you were born. In other words, God cared about you even before you took your first breath. He thought of you. Next verse in Psalms 139, you, you talk about God, uh, you, he's talking about God here. He's, you scheduled every day of my life before I began to breathe. Every day was recorded in your book. In other words, dear people, that's how much God cares about you. He pays so much attention to your life that every detail was recorded and written down already before you even took your first breath. That's how much you matter to God. Do you matter? Yes, he made you. He made you to love you. And the Bible says you do matter. He sees everything in your life. He sees the good, the bad, and everything in between. A guy named uh, Dr. Hugh Moorhead, who is a chairman of the Department of Philosophy at Northeastern University, once wrote to 250 well-known philosophers, uh, scientists, writers, intellectuals in the world, and he asked them this question. What would you write down? What is the purpose of life? Then and he, he got their return responses and he put it into a book. And it was quite a discouraging, depressing book. Because some of these people offered their best guess. Some admitted that they just sort of made up a purpose. And some admitted that they didn't have any idea as to what purpose of life was. And then they wrote, if Dr. Moorhead knew, would he please reply and let them know? I was watching a, uh, a, a video or a, a film, a documentary of the 1960s teenagers. And it happens that it was me. Well, it was my, my era. Uh, it wasn't my school, but it was another school in St. Louis. And it was, it, it brought back all the haircuts, it brought back all the dress, all the other things. And uh, they were asking kids at that age, which is probably was exactly my age. Um, what is your purpose in life? What do you what do you want to do with your life? And they said, Well, I want to go to a good college, and I want to get a good job, and I want I want I want a job and a house and a and a car and 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 I I want a family. Teenagers, you know, it's interesting. Would that change anyway today? Interesting question. There are probably times in your life when you felt that way too. Was I born into this world just to basically run into a bunch of problems? Was I put in this planet to have heartache and grief and stress? Someone wrote, I hope life isn't a joke because I don't get it. Is God playing games with us? Is God intentionally trying to confuse us? Does he keep us in the dark so that we don't really know why we're here? 
what we're here for, what our meeting is. I mean, is that the plan? No, that's not the plan. God wants you to know how much you matter to him. God wants you to know the meaning of life. God wants you to know what the purpose is. He, he, he's done a lot to help you in learning this. He has got long-range plans for you also. Look at the next verse, Psalms 33. His plans endure how long? Forever. His purposes last when? How long? What? Eternally. So his plans for you are forever and eternally. In other words, the purposes you're going to, we're going to look at are not just for the rest of your life. They are for the rest of your life after this life. Because God's purposes for you are eternal. And when we talk about the five things that God has put you on this earth for, he just wants you to practice here what you're going to do forever and eternity. God wants you to practice the things that you're going to do in heaven forever and ever. In other words, dear people, this is the warm-up act. What you're doing now, this is dress rehearsal. And God says, I have plans and purposes for your life, but they don't end at death. Because when you die, your heart is going to stop, and that will be the end of your body, your fleshly body, but that's not the end of you. You are far more than just a fleshly body. You are made by God to last forever. The Bible says in Psalms 33, his purposes last eternally. God says, number, the next line is, God says I, I was made to last forever. God says I was made to last forever. Write that down. I was made to be loved by God. I was made to last forever. This life is not all there is. One of the biggest ways you can waste your life is thinking this is it. This is all there is. This is here and now. This is it. And by the way, you're going to spend far more time on the other side of death than you did on this side of death. This side is just a drop in the bucket. You're made for eternity and life is preparation for eternity. You're not going to find that in a self-help book. Life is preparation for eternity. We're going to talk about that and prepare for that. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. When this tent that we live in, this body here on earth, is torn down, God will have a house in heaven for us to live in, a home he himself has made which will last forever. You were made to know God. And you were made to know how much you matter to God. You matter so much that he wants to keep you around for the rest of eternity. How much, that's how much you matter to him. He wants to keep you with him forever, and that gives meaning. Look at the verse here, Proverbs chapter 9. Leave your impoverished confusion and live and walk up the street to a life with meaning. And so the question of existence is, is why am I alive? God answers it by saying, I made you to love you. That's why you're alive. And in the question of significance, does my life matter? God says, oh yeah, you really matter. You matter so much that I intend on keeping you alive for the rest of eternity. You're going to be around for a long, long time. So that brings me to number three, third question. What is the question of intention? Intention, what is my purpose? What on earth am I here for? Psalms 89, David says, why did you create us? David then goes on to say, did you create us for nothing? By the way, you need to ask the question, who's David talking to? Is he talking to himself? No, he's talking to God. The atheist uh, philosopher of the last century, Bertrand Russell from England, was an atheist. At least he was, he was intellectually honest about it. He said, unless you, uh, unless you assume the existence of God, the question about life having meaning and, the life, and life having purpose is irrelevant. Unless you have a God, purpose and meaning is irrelevant for you. You see, if there is no God, if you're just a sort of freak chance of nature, if you're just sort of complex pond scum, 
then guess what? Your life doesn't matter. If somebody wants to take it, they could because there's no real reason, there's no meaning, there's no purpose to you. The difference is, is that there is a God. God made you for a reason. And he made you for a purpose. And the only way you're going to know your purpose is first looking to him. I don't know if you've ever uh, done with your kids, your grandkids, and showed them a gadget. And then asked them to tell you what this gadget is. And what does it do? What's its purpose? And uh, well, you can take your air pressure gauge for your tire pressure and all that. Or remote control. Fun, fun thing, if you still have one of these, show them a rotary phone. <laughs> See if they know what to do with it. And uh, Because then the kids come right back to you and say, Grandpa, this is a computer, do you know what, okay. Or, or this is your iPhone, let me explain it to you. Uh, what a modem is, what a router is, all of these fun things that are gadgets that we're really, uh, I'm thankful for grandkids. Um, if you don't know somebody, if you don't know something's purpose, it's likely to be abused. You want to know why there are so many abused people today, because we don't know our purpose. And when you don't know the purpose of something, it's likely that we will do something bad to it, or we will misuse it, or we will abuse it. That's the first idea here, the first point. The second point is, the only way that you're going to know what some things are, either is that you have to talk to the creator, or the inventor, or you have to read the owner's manual. And like guys, we don't want to read the owner's manual. The only way you're going to... The only way you're ever going to learn your purpose in life is not by listening to philosophers because even the best ones are basically guessing. It's not, it's not looking within that's going to help you. It's not looking within some kind of self-help book because they're just saying, well, figure out your own purpose. Create your own. In other words, you've got to talk to the creator who made you or look in his owner's manual. The only way you'll ever find your purpose in life is to look in there. Genesis 1, 1. First verse in the Bible, what does it say? In the beginning, God created. So right from day one, the words are right there that he created us. It doesn't say we created him. In those words, if those words hadn't been there, it would be, uh, why would we be talking about the meaning of life? What do we care? But since God created us, we have, it starts with God, it continues with God, it ends with God. In the beginning, God created, the Bible tells me so. Proverbs chapter 9. Knowing, God's res knowing God results in every other kind of understanding. You want understanding and meaning in your life. You want to understand your purpose in life. You find your purpose in life by getting to know God. Write that down. By getting to know God. It all starts with God. The next verse says, Colossians chapter 1, for everything, absolutely everything above and below, visible and invisible, everything got started in Him and finds its purpose in Him. Next verse, Ephesians chapter 1. It is in Christ that we find out who we are and what we are living for. Part of the overall purpose that God has for us is working out everything and working out everything and for everyone and uh, everything and everyone. If you want to know your purpose in life, start by getting to know God. In other words, the more that you know God, the more you're going to understand the way and the wisdom of God, and the more you're going to understand why you are here. You're going to understand meaning and purpose of life by getting to know God. And the more you're going to understand everything else, because the Bible says knowing God results in all of that kind of understanding. You're not going to learn it from a talk show. You're not going to learn it from some psychic reading. You're not going to learn it by reading tea leaves. You're not going to learn it by going to some seminar. You're only, the only way you're going to learn the meaning of life and purpose for life is by getting to know God. It all starts with God. In the beginning, God. If you're going to get to know God's purpose for your life, you have to get to know Him. It's just that simple. 
But let me just say, understanding God's purpose for your life does take time. It's not just sort of a quick fix and it's over. And that's why we are going to spend the next 40 days looking at this. Why 40 days? Well, it is Lent as we journey toward Easter. And uh, it's interesting, the Bible talks a lot about 40. And as a significant time period in the Bible. Noah's life was transformed by 40 days of rain. Moses' life was transformed by 40 days on Mount Sinai. The spies were transformed by 40 days in the Promised Land. David was transformed by Goliath's 40-day challenge. The city of Nineveh was transformed by 40 days with Jonah. Jesus was empowered for ministry by spending 40 days in the desert. The disciples were transformed by 40 days with Jesus after the resurrection. Regardless of where you are in your own spiritual journey, look at this last verse. Acts chapter 10, it makes no difference who you are or where you're from. If you want God and are ready to, uh, uh, to, uh, to, to do as he asks, the door is open. It's never too late. Let me close with this. It's interesting that the, the poet, I think, says it very good, very well. You are who you are for a reason. You're part of an infinite plan. Your precious and perfect, unique design, God calls special woman or man. You look like you look for a reason. Our God made no mistake. He, he knit you together within the womb. You are just what he wanted to make. The parents you have were the ones he chose, and no matter how you feel, they were custom designed with God's plan in mind, and they bear the master's seal. Know that trauma that you faced was not easy, and God wept when it hurt you so, but it was allowed to shape your heart so that into his likeness you'd grow. You are who you are for a reason, and you've been formed by the master's rod, and you are who you are, believe it, be, beloved, because there is a God. Let's bow together in prayer. We're thankful that we can bow before you, our Heavenly Father, and we realize that if it weren't for you, we wouldn't be alive. But because you made us, you must have a purpose for us. I mean, at times it's easy to focus on my plans and my life and not yours, but I want to know your purposes for me. Thank you that you made us so that you could love us. Thank you that you cared for us even when we didn't care for you. Thank you that you made us to last forever. May you fill us, Lord, with a fulfilled understanding of meaning. And I know that meaning starts by getting to know you better. We ask today, Lord, that our lives would have purpose, that it would come from you, and that you will come into our lives to help us. Help us as we read your word and listen to your Holy Spirit in our lives to understand your plan for our life. Thank you for sending Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen.